What's up LC heads? Today we're going to be looking at Virgil and Balin. We're going to be comparing them a little bit. See, uh, you know, see where they stand next to each other. Let's start off with Virgil in here. Why not run this map? It's a great showcase of what a Virgil can do with the flinch proofness. One of my favorite aspects of this character. And just the damage he can dump. Right, we'll start right off rip with our doppelganger. We do need to try to connect with most of us. Oh. Oh, he, he got me. I need to try to do damage to this guy before my ability wears off. Oh, crap. Oh no, it's a rogue's fight. He just about interrupted my S3, which isn't good. We're going to need that. We got to trick up our sleeve or two, I think. But we can survive this. Thing is, we need to connect afterwards. That's what it's all about. Because this guy's. Oh, I ran the wrong way. No. That's what we needed to do. We needed to connect with some stuff like that. Can we survive one more of these? I see Proud Force has been doing us all right. We're still kind of alive. Uh, we just need to maybe finish him off. We got an S3 to throw. We're going to have to finesse it a little bit make sure we actually hit. Oh, I was going to say that might be it. Okay, cool. So... And we finish with the triple S. So flinch proof for the win. I think that's a pretty decent showcase of you know why flinch proof is important because at the very end there, bosses go ape shit when they're down to 30% health. Let's run the same thing with Balin. Right? And uh neither of these heroes are weak, right? I've been working on this guy. Let's take a quick look at what he's bringing up to play. Uh, he's at a little over 10k hit points, uh, 318 MP, strength 2886, defense 1821, and 859, who cares, mind 1284. Uh, this fight right here is a defense intense fight because he's doing all physical damage. We'll go to another map too and we'll showcase something different there. We're going to be looking at clear time here. Right, here's what he is equipped with, typical stuff, the black diamonds helping here come back to life once but we didn't even use all his lives there um here's what he has i'll show you guys what i've given him uh, i usually don't run him with the extra hit points on him i toggle a few of these things on and off we got the aim vital surprise attack sometimes i like to bring uh where is it skill one break skill one boost yeah uh, and then there's another one, skill one breakthrough or something, where it's, you know, a thousand more to damage cap with your S1. I like to run Revenge Metas too, if I want to uh, Proud Force a little bit better. I uh, don't have any of that though. We have Reverse Cross, we have Doppelhander Boost. Reverse Cross uh, is just nice to have. We got Piercing, and we have Swordsman Mindset. We have some auto mail equip, do a little bit more damage, take a little bit less. Your demon like ways to help. Uh, I just like the grand, brave, critical, and speed. You can easily toggle that off. The real reason I have that is it takes up the space of either Berserker or a Slayer that I'm going to be using. I took Berserker off because I realized with Berserker I'm wasting one of my lives. I'm coming back to life, and Berserker's instantly killing me. And I'm wasting one of my four lives or whatever it is. And I'm like, no, because I could do something with that life instead and actually make a comeback from it. So I took Berserker off and I just had 8 SC. I didn't want to put a Slayer on because that makes it kind of unfair. So instead I just threw Demon-like Ways. I was just going to help with the Grand Brave crit and speed. And honestly, I'm probably not going to use this. But this is the build that just ran this uh, and soloed it. So we do have Sharp Eyes here. We have Savage Strike, which I worry about on this character because uh, your damage and damage cap scales off of your combo. 
So if you miss, your damn your your uh, combo is broken. That might be an issue with this character. I haven't got to test it out yet, but it's an attack damage 50% increase, so it's pretty huge. Um, let's see. We have From Zero, which is definitely helping us come back to life, and I don't care about losing all my MP and everything, right, because this guy can heal it all back with Goddess Kiss. We are taking that. I think that's 11 SC. Or where is it? Oh, Maybe, yeah, we don't even have Goddess Kiss on. That's right. So, yeah, we are on just, like, kill mode. We're not even getting back any of our MP. Right? Uh, we're using Phone Booth to literally just feed our kit. Give us SCT 30 seconds at the boss wave. That is what's charging our kit and giving us a bunch of S1s to throw in the beginning. Um, I could easily take Phone Booth off if I wanted to or from zero. Uh, put some more no attribute attack rise for 11 SC I could easily fit that uh, haven't really found the need to he is just doing so much freaking damage you saw him just triumph here right uh, he is still not fully enhanced have some work to do there so that's awesome because his special gets better um, I'm gonna leave phone booth on him because then he starts with like 35% to his special and it's just that much faster to drop his special and proc your devil driver ability off of that and that way you can save your actual transformation and actually throw it at the end when you know a boss is going to threshold and you're going to need to be able to finish that boss off before he just pins you to a freaking wall right so that's the idea there all right we're just going to leave him in this configuration we will take balin Here's Balin, what he looks like, reigning champ. He is more woke, I guess you could say. He's at 94 SC. Um, what's cool about Balin is he has more hit count added to his ability kit, so he's bridging the gap between dual wield and double hand, but he's not full on doubling his attacks. Like, you look at the S1s alone between Virgil and Balin, Balin. Let's say you have like a 5 hit S1, Balin gets plus 1 to that, so he has a 6 hit S1. His S3 has plus 5 hits, so that's cool, but the S1, he has, you know, 6 hits instead of 5. Let's say Virgil has 5 hits, he now gets to do 10 because he gets to double his hit count. So you have 3 of your S1s, right? Uh, 6 times 3, that's 18 attacks, 18 hits for Balin. Uh... Virgil's going to be hitting 10 times though so 10 times 3 it's 30 so 18 hits or 30 right obviously you're going to want the 30 hits right especially when both these heroes are hitting for like the same freakishly high damage cap uh, Balin is going to get to use his mind and his strength to scale his damage from so Effectively, this Balin has a 5,000 strength, right? Because if you add his strength in his mind, that's the stat you get, and that's what he scales off of for damage. So he also takes way less magic damage because his mind is so high. Proud Force works better for him. Uh, he is his own MP battery. I think he comes with Goddess Kiss. Uh, like, he just has that in his kit for free. Virgil has to bring that. Right, I'm just trying to look at this fairly, right? Uh, ailment resistance, they're about the same. Hit points, they're about the same. Here's what mine's equipped with. We'll see how he does here. Here's what I have on him. Well, it's going to be a lot of the same stuff. A lot of Savage Strike. Uh, some Backstab. Fighting Spirit, we got Crit Up 2. Do, do, do. Skill Charge 3, we love that S3 of his. Aim Vitals. You're gonna need to like try to run away and attack this guy. Surprise attack, skill one boost. I love that skill one boost. It's awesome. More to damage cap, I think. We do have fast vacation. That's gonna help, right? Because it's a fast-paced fight. We have combo master. Why not? He can get his extra hits in there, and you know, get a couple of his uh, his abilities together, and you got yourself quite a nice little combo going. As long as you don't get it interrupted. Reverse Cross, a lot of the same stuff. Demon Lord Awakening, and he has a piece of equipment that cancels out the debuff from this. So it's pretty nifty for him. 
He has piercing as well, and he has Empire of Might. Empire of Might is not going to do him that much here. It's just going to give him 5% instead of like 30. Uh, let's see. Yeah, uh, my other build's not perfect either. It's got like a few handicap abilities, so we can just leave that on. Savage Strike is right here. And we do have no attribute attack rise for 11 SC that we're rocking here. And no attribute attack rise 2 for 15 SC. Alright, so this Balin, that's what he's got. I showed his equipment. There's 6 star, 7 star pieces of gear. These guys are just about even. Uh, Balin's obviously stronger a little bit. I've had more time to work on him and to wake him. Let's see how Balin does. Same thing. We're going to... Well, effectively do the same thing, right? So we will, let's see, we'll use our Charisma. Silent Contemplation, I don't think we're going to get away with here. We'll try. Until he gets to us and interrupts us. Oh, that interruption shit. There's us too. I mean, we're doing great damage. We are fulfilling our damage, right? But I figured that was going to happen, right? What I'm worried about is actually getting this guy down to 30%. And then how is Balin going to do then when you literally don't have flinch proof and you might not be able to interrupt this guy? Here, Here's where the real fight begins. Now, luckily, I say... I mean, Balin could do this, but we're going to have to find an opening. And it's going to be harder without the flinch proofness. Oh, and he just interrupted our S3 like it was nothing. We have Council of Ten, right? I don't think Balin gets to come back as many times to life, but we're going to make a go with this S3. Like, if I could S3 him, if I could run away in S3. S1, come on. Come on. Oh, yes, I can catch him up with the S3. Let's go, baby. Oh shit, I was going to say the S2 was putting in good work, and we did get a lot of our health back, so we have a fighting chance here. We just have to get through this shit. Oh, all we have is an S2. If we can connect with our S2, come on. Oh! Alright, so we did make it. It was close. That was about to be it, too, because if we didn't come through with that S2, we were done. He was going to wipe us. So this one's definitely close, uh, you know, and hey, Balin can fulfill his damage for sure. Uh, I just think it's easier when you just have that flinch proof uh, mechanic to throw down. Um, a perk for Balin though is he's going to be able to resist magic like a lot better than Virgil is, right? But let's take this somewhere else. It was a good run for both of them. Um, if we go to the ogre level, though, right, this is where it gets a little bit interesting, too, because now we are dealing with birds, crowd control, magic, right, and a lot of things that can interrupt you. So we'll do the same thing. We'll start with the reigning champ, uh... Right, and we're going to throw a Charisma to increase our damage cap, and we will throw our uh, our Arc, and then we'll just go balls to the wall damage, right, and just try to do as much as we can and finish as quick as we can, and we'll do the same thing with Virgil. Instead of a Charisma, we'll use his Transformation. You can't use Silent Contemplation here, because by the time it goes off, the birds are all over you, so that is not going to help us. Council of Ten will... And then we're just going to S3 in there and just do all we can. Problem is, they can still... Oh, see? They can still interrupt us. And as great as our damage is, they can catch us up here and there, right? Because they can push us around. That was still a, a, a good clear, right? We still cleared it, no problem. But you guys did see me getting bounced around. Some of my... Uh, ability kit getting shut down and ultimately what did that take it typically like Balin here it takes him like almost 10 seconds to clear this right oh 12 seconds so i got bounced around one or two more times this time so 12 second clear time i'll be honest with you guys i ran this a few times with him it's usually 10 to 12 seconds 
usually comes in at 11 seconds. That is what Balin does here, and that's that's where he's going to be at. Now, if I try this with Virgil, let's see how this old bastard does. Uh, we're going to do the same exact thing. Remember, 12 seconds, that's the time to beat. Right, and I think what Virgil is good at really shines through here. Right, because I go doppelhander, and as soon as I do that, they can't stop my attacks now. We'll just start with an S3, S1. Oh, they got me with the lightning, though. And yeah, that cost us some time. We still might be able to be. Valen's time, that cost us some time. Every other time I've ran this, that threw me for a loop. Uh, I can just go in the middle there, and I can kill everybody instantly. They can't interrupt me as long as I keep doing my damage. You can get caught up if one of them hits you in between your uh, skill kit, and that seems to be what happened. But a lot of times, oh, well, we beat Balin's time by two seconds, but hold on. I think we can do better than that. That was not a normal run for uh for this dude here let's try that again real quick we'll give a uh, bail in the benefit of the doubt we'll say like nine seconds because i'll be honest with you virgil can usually clear this it's not like 10 seconds it's not like eight or nine it's not even close it's like three to four seconds guys that is a big f difference i don't know if my timing was just off there and then we S1 through, S1 through, some S2 or something. Yeah, that's a typical average run for Virgil here. So what's our time now? Because yeah, this this felt like normal. What is it? Four seconds? Three? Six seconds. Okay, a little bit longer. Uh, the point is, I was getting much better much better clear times with Virgil obviously just because you're doubling that hit count that is so hard to overcome uh, now one can make the, the argument that obviously Balin's going to be better in like a sustained damage situation um, honestly personally for me and this is just IMO my opinion I'm, I'm sticking with team Virgil here on this one because just that hit count is so hard to overcome and if you set him up right, you're going to be able to drop your special, right? Um, that special is going to keep you going, and it's going to give you that awesome, crazy, freaking buff thing. We didn't even get to do that here, right? Because we've been going into these quick skirmish fights, right? But on most big boss fights, you're going to be able to get to a special, especially when you start the boss wave with your special 35% already charged. And when you're woke, right? Um, this guy's going to be able to throw his special all over the place. And, you know, that being said, you still have the ability to drop his special on demand once per wave, once per, not wave, once per battle. So obviously at the boss fight, when you get the boss down to 30% health or wherever he thresholds, that is when you can use Sacrifice Your 200 MP and you can drop that and you can have your flinch proof and double your hit count in order to really apply that uh, burst damage in the worst of situations and actually finish the boss off. Don't get me wrong, uh, Balin is really, really good too with the damage and everything, but it's he's more interruptible. Um, so now that's just personally IMO. If you think I'm wrong, leave me a comment. We can talk about this. I definitely want to know. I want to know where the LC community stands on this because I know we're going to have people on both sides, right? There's going to be the Balin camp, the reigning champ, right? And there's going to be the Virgil camp. And honestly, yo, I'm just looking at this uh, double hand dual wield thing and it's pretty freaking awesome. A lot of times I'm going to be reaching for Virgil to run this stuff. Uh, these guys also run amazing together in the same party. Uh, they've made it so, right? Balin's charisma is just awesome for Virgil. It's gonna give him even more damage cap, right? Because he is pretty much using the same sword style, right? So he can benefit from that. Virgil, of course, does not bring any of his own charisma, so 
he needs somebody else in the party for that, Balin can do that, and then you can just bring some kind of support, breaker, whatever you want. Uh, it's just going to be killer, killer, non-elemental damage. Um, so I'm going to be running that party. Can't wait to see what I can do with it. But I don't know if I had to choose one or the other. Man, you could you could get a Virgil as a new account and you could just rock Last Claudia. Hell, you could solo <laughs> solo a lot of it with a freaking Virgil just because that ability is so freaking crazy strong. Being able to turn that on, I don't know. I'm digging it, right? Uh, so tomorrow we will cover the other hero. He is not at you know damn near 100 SC yet. That's why we're only talking about Virgil. We still have the Golden Boy to cover, but I did want to kind of compare Virgil with uh, Balin because they're they're so close, right? And uh, I got no hate for anyone that's on Team Balin at all. Balin is just an awesome character. He's an awesome Last Cloudier character, but I still have to give credit where it's due, too. For anybody to even compete with Balin for a spot at the top is just effing insane. For you to even be a goddamn threat you're already just one of the most powerful heroes in this game so they definitely show this collab some love and i will be back later to talk about the other hero and i don't even know who to compare him to yet but um stay tuned uh make sure to sub if you don't want to miss it and uh you know if you want to support this important work that i do anyway i hope you enjoyed and have an awesome night later